Welcome to The Nation. I'm Rachel Smalley. The Reserve Bank's proposal to restrict low equity mortgages seems likely to be introduced in the next couple of months. And Prime Minister John Key has admitted first home buyers are unlikely to be exempt, despite his earlier hopes they would be. Key says the Auckland housing market can't be left unchecked for the sake of the entire economy. We're going to talk about the options for cooling down the current housing market frenzy. But first, our reporter Tony Ng visited some open homes to find out just how expensive Auckland has become. OK, Tony, come on in. Yeah, it's quite spacious. Real estate agent property. Roshni Snami has been um, in the business just over a year and now averages have... around four sales so a month. So basically you can see it's quite a typical townhouse layout. We've got the she works in Royal Oak, in a small central area. Auckland suburb about 10 kilometres from the city centre and nestled close to the posh suburb of Epsom. The bathroom, it's just a standard bathroom, but it's always nice to have good light and um, an outside window. And it's where the three-bedroom townhouse sold for $475,000. Okay, so just coming... So what will a little more money buy? Say half a million dollars? And through the Here's another room. property so in Royal Oak. Have. With this property, um, the CV for 2011 is 415,000, but um, our price expectation would be, you know, from kind of early to mid fives and upwards. Okay, Tony, come on through. You'd think a million dollars should buy a pretty impressive place. Um, so what we've got here is uh, three bedrooms. This is another central Auckland suburb, Hillsborough. Nice enough, but certainly not flash. <laughs> And probably one of the nicest features of the property is the deck out the back. We'll just have a quick look. And this is what a million dollars buys here. But note, the value in this property right. is the potential to subdivide. Um, Mount Mangere across Roshni Sami sees a lot of like, Chinese well, buyers in her part of Auckland you know, and says some are being loaned money by Chinese banks. Upwards. And that's been confirmed to us to by other agents in Auckland. It's my understanding that Chinese banks are now lending against properties in New Zealand, which is unusual. For example, we couldn't get a mortgage from, a, from an Australian bank on a property in New Zealand, right? So that would definitely be advantaging um, people that can access those loans. And my understanding is that they're at lower rates, but you'd need to check that. Okay, so Tony, if you... Meet um, Simon Short, like the Bailey's regional group, manager. A, uh, He's watched Mount Albert transform from a state house suburb into a million dollar area. Come on through here. Uh, and we've got this lovely open plan kitchen living area. A real feature I think for this home is that uh, family quality where you've got the ability for mum and dad to be able to see what's going on in the backyard while still being in here entertaining. So for a house like this, uh, what do you expect it to sell for? We'd be expecting a property like this to sell from a million dollars upwards, uh, given the location, uh, particularly the proximity to the inner city as well. Uh, so all those sorts of things culminate together and hence why there is so much interest for property like this. And this is what a million plus will get you. A nice buy as long as you don't mind a cross lease and sharing a driveway with your neighbour. This house is marketed at first home buyers and young families. Great location, it's conducive for a young family or someone that's trying to get into the market. Who can expect uh, to pay more than $600,000 for a home with a deck uh, but no garden. Out here. Lovely covered um, veranda porch area here. Uh, we've got obviously the entertaining deck here which has been tastefully done. We've had 56 groups of buyers through here already. Uh, we've had interest from those buyers uh, from 600000 so, you know, plenty of interest given the sort of cross section of the marketplace and that affordability range. Come through, Tony. The average number of properties for sale in Auckland you, has dropped from 16,000 in 2008, at the height of the last property boom, to just around 7,000. On to the top end of the market. This house is in the wealthy suburb of Takapuna. It has a CV of $1.25 million. It's sold for $2.3 million. So it's just one of those uh, properties that it wouldn't surprise me to see somebody just land bank and, and wait and see. It's that old real estate cliche, don't wait to buy good real estate, buy good real estate and wait. Andrew North has been an auctioneer for the last 13 years. In his time, he's seen three property booms and watched as auctions have become one of the most popular ways to sell a house. Certainly the offices that I'm involved in, we would be auctioning in excess of 50% of our properties. So buyers, good luck in your buying decision. We Space saw Andrew in action later that night. 
not everyone was there to buy. Some buyers told us they were there to do their homework and how to get a good deal. Silence is permission to sell at 590 and it is... Megan Fraser was relieved to win the auction. Sold, well bought. She and her husband have sold their first home and desperately needed to buy. She says if the proposed loan restrictions are introduced, she wouldn't have been able to buy this place. I think for first home buyers it's definitely not going to help them out at all, especially even, even with me and my husband buying our second home in this market, if that had come in it would have really limited what we could have brought. We would have probably gone from a three bedroom to maybe a one or two bedroom in this, in this market. It is going, it is going, sold in front, congratulations sir, well bid, now you can do that man, well done. <laughs> but she says home buyers should have hope. We walked in tonight nervous but we we wanted to be you know, positive about it, but we didn't expect to walk out with a house. And hey, we got the best, <laughs> best outcome we could. So yeah, just keep going, I say. <laughs> Tony Ng reporting there, and that story was edited by Hitendra Patel.